winter location, spring location. Let's talk about summer location now. You gotta love summer. Nice outside, warm outside, catch a tan. Love fishing in the summertime. But water temperature is starting to warm up now in the shallows in the summer. So the sunfish are a little uncomfortable with the warmer water temperatures. So they're looking for something more comfortable, which is gonna be the deeper water. Gonna be finding location of these summer sunfish on the edges of weeds, anywhere from six to 12 feet of water. 14 feet of water is not uncommon. Another favorite spot of mine to find summer location sunfish is any kind of sunken humps. Any kind of sunken humps in 16 feet of water are deeper. A sunken hump in 20 feet that comes up to 16 feet or 15 feet with a nearby structure is a prime location. A better hump is a hump with weeds on it. These are fantastic spots to catch sunfish. Okay, keep this in mind. Now let's talk about equipment. Again, rods, six foot six to six foot ultralight action has always been good. A lot of guys switch to medium right now. A lot of the toothy critters are biting on the sunfish equipment. Line again, I'm still caught between three pound tests and four. A lot of times I'll switch to four just because of the toothy critters biting again. You've got uh, northern pike, you've got walleyes, and you've got aggressive bass, okay? I like to get them in, get them boated and released as quick as I can. Okay, reels, same scenario as wintertime as a springtime. A little bit bigger reel now. Anything with a two to three ball bearings, four or five or six works great. You know what works good for me? My walleye reels. I love them. Get a hundred pound test, uh, get a three pound test or four pound test line, hundred yards of it is really good. Works out fantastic. Okay, now is a good time. Deeper water, you have to be watching your sonars. A lot of sonars out there. Hummingbird, Lawrence, they're some of the top two in the nation. They're both good, okay? I really pay close attention to my sonars. I'm going over a sunken hump. I see fish, I will get the trolling motor down and it is time to start fishing. Watch that sonar. Someone told me something 40 years ago made a lot of sense to me when I was a kid. If you don't see fish on that sonar, don't stop and fish. Keep that in mind. Next, let's talk about lures. Summertime, there is a ton of lures to use. Unlike the winter and spring, you think there's a lot, there's a lot more in the summertime. Any kind of little jig with spinners really works out good this time of year. Okay, the small jigs anywhere from a 16th ounce to quarter ounce. Yes, quarter ounce for sunfish works fantastic. Depends all what type of mood there is. Like I said earlier, there's a ton of different companies that have a ton of different great lures out there. Main thing is you can never have enough lures. Now bait, I love bait. Midsummer, okay, we're still using them when you can find them. Wax worms, spikes, mousies are sort of much done right now this time of year in the Midwest, so you're not gonna find too many of them. Angle worms. Night crawlers, leeches. Here's another one I bet you never guess. Grasshoppers. That's right. Grasshoppers for bait. Sunfish love grasshoppers. A lot of time they're on the shore hopping around. Wind catches them, throws them into the lake. If they're far enough out, these sunfish will pick them up. Keep that in mind for bait. You want to have a lot of lively bait. Okay, you know anybody who lives on a farm? Go in the manure pile, you dig out the white grubs. Sunfish love those white grubs during the summertime. I know it sounds a little gross, but it works fantastic. Now's the time to really pay close attention to your presentation. These fish have been pressured pretty much all the way through winter, spring, early summer, and now midsummer. These fish get finicky. I am definitely watching my line, watching a spring. I know a lot of people yet still use their ice rods with a sensitive tip. Works fantastic. Do I use a bobber midsummer? Not too often. I'm paying close attention to that rod tip or that line for it to jump. There's not a presentation these fish haven't seen from winter, spring, early summer, and now it's midsummer. So what you wanna do is get their attention. They're being finicky this time of year. You wanna work these lures aggressively. And I mean work them aggressively. Get down there to the bottom, jig your way up. Get down to the bottom, jig your way up. I move in sequence, every six inches stop, watch that line. Every six inches stop, watch a line. Another thing that's worked great for us over the years is I will have a bobber stop on my line. I'll have that set right at the depth when my jig is at the bottom, I set the bobber stop at the top of the water so I know how close I am. I can work that up and down. This is the time of year, like I said, you have to move aggressively with your presentation. Don't be afraid to switch baits very quickly too. That is what you gotta do in midsummer presentation. Work aggressively, work quick, catch quick. You know, summer's progressed now. We're getting into, we went from spring late spring techniques. Now we're into early summer and you can see the lily pads have come up. We're fishing the edge of the weed bed. Nice little sunny. Not bad at all. Nice sunfish. 
And that's where these sunfish are starting to stage with early summer. They're still on the edge. They're still sitting in the weed beds. They're sitting in the bulrushes. They're sitting in the lily pads. Like I said, that just came up. This is no exception. Nice start to the day. Haven't been fishing more than 30 seconds. What I've been doing is casting into the pockets of the bulrushes, working back and forth slowly with the trolling motor. Not everything is going to be anchored when you're after big bluegills like this. It's good to move around and be versatile. Look at that. That's a nice bluegill anywhere. Anywhere. Beautiful colorations to it. Right there. <laughs> Again, right in the pockets of the lily pads. The fish will stage in those pockets. They got little burrows there, little homes and stuff. They're done spawning. This is after the spawn. And the fish are still hanging around the area. They're sort of watching, guarding their homes, just like you do and I do. It's been, uh, it's been nonstop action. It's wonderful. Bobber down and, oh, this is a nice one. I can see him, but we're tied up in the weeds. There we go. There we go. This is more of what we're looking for here. We're using a rat so there with a little bit of a wax worm just to help get him on that hook there. So I just tossed it in. These guys are hitting quick. And that's the result of it. So nice fish. We're going to keep this one. There we go. Oh, is it still on? Yeah, it's a little. Oh no. A little different coloring. There we go. Another decent bluegill there. I think this one we'll throw back though. Another nice one. You know, we've been catching Travis and I. We've been here 15 minutes. This is probably fish number 20 to 25. Beautiful hand sized bluegill. That's over hand size. You know, look at the beautiful colors to them. Okay, one thing to keep in mind when handling bluegills, crappies, any type of uh, fish that has a high pectoral fin on top like this, they're prickly sharp. They're little needles. So, what I like to do is when I grab them to unhook them or to release them, I lay back this fin just like this. Now I don't have a chance of getting my fingers pricked by those fins. So just grab the back of the fin, these are all razor sharp, and lay them back when you handle these fish. When you take the hook out, same thing. Now you got uh, easy access. This one is going in the live well. There we go, this is what we're looking for. All right, there we go. This is a nice one, this one's for the live well. We actually got a double going, so time to flip over and let Steve catch his. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's been fun. You know, holding on to the camera with one hand, holding on to a sunfish, rod and reel on the other hand. Like Travis said, they're starting to turn on again. Nice sunny, just beautiful sunfish. You know, I've been using just plain, ordinary angleworms. Problem with them, dirty. And you know what? I'm not a fan of having a lot of dirt around the boat. Here's what I do before I hook them up. Rinse them off. Now they're clean. I'm going to show you a simple method. You know, you can thread on and have one piece. Or, I found out too, sometimes if you gob them on, you're going to catch a bigger sunfish. So I just start to string them on. Hook them up about three, four times. Then with a the fingernail, pinch it off. There you go. That's all it is. Wash them off to keep the dirt to a minimum. Glob on a big piece. Now when we started fishing a half hour ago, Travis and I, this was a brand new hook, red. Look at it. That's how many fish, how many bites we've had. This one feels nice. Yeah. Nice bluegill there. Like I showed before, this was a ratso. 
Now it's just a glow jig head, but I'm still throwing the wax rims on there. They're still hitting it. So we'll throw this one in the live well too. Love it when they go around in circles like a pie plate. That's exactly what it feels like, a pie plate coming in. All right. Nice little one. You can tell some of these fish have been caught before. This one's got a torn lip. You know what? I'm going to add this one to the meal. Oh, got underneath the weeds. Here we go. There we go. Nice fish. Get them loose here. There we go, that's a nice bluegill. Now I switched things up here a little bit. So I switched over to a gill pill, kept the glow in the dark feature, and then what I did is I just attached a plastic uh, beetle grub. All right, it's got a little red eye in the middle there. So it's faking the wax worm. So I thought, let's try that out a little bit. Let's see what that does. First cast, 10 seconds, bluegill. So there we go. It looks like this might be a key thing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this one in the live well since it's a nice fish. And we'll see what we can catch. There we go. Another decent sized bluegill. All right. <laughs> Yeah, fish with attitude, you gotta love that. Fish with attitude. Going around in a circle, you know what that is. Midsummer. Sunfish are located mid lake structure, structure anywhere off the main part of the shoreline. Right now, we're fishing to drop off the edges of cabbage weed anywhere from 8 to 12, 14 feet of water. Kim and I. Last week we are fishing a mid-lake hump. Kim's had this of a place here for quite a while. So, mid-lake hump during summertime. Summertime, this is end of July all the way through August. Sunfish will relate to deep water structure, whether it be cabbage weeds, whether it be grass or humps. Anything that can attract game fish, bait fish, forage, invertebrates, microorganisms, stuff like that will attract the sunfish. Here we go. That is a decent sized mid-lake, mid-summer, Sunfish, very nice size midsummer sunfish. Work that jig out, beautiful sunny. Like I said, keep in mind, midsummer, the sunfish are going to relate to deeper water structure. They're not in the shallows no more, they're not on the spotting beds no more. They're relating to deeper water structure. Edges of cabbage weeds, edges of pencil grass, mid lake humps, like I was saying earlier, they all hold and attract nice size sunnies. Look at the size of that bluegill. That's a nice size sunny anywhere. A little smaller than the one Steve caught. Nice eating fish though. Very nice. Very clean. Very nice. Again, hook, two dead hook down, right down to his throat. What I try to do is I try to, I like a little tail on my my hook and I'll, I'll, I'll string my worm on twice. So I, I got a little tail there that dangles in the water and uh, that that is a very good method for summertime fishing right now. Uh, angleworms though are very messy, so not everybody enjoys the angleworm uh, routine. Okay, Kim showed you how he hooks up the angleworm. I'm gonna show you my little technique here of doing a leech. Baby leeches, you know. Un unlike, you know, walleye fishing where you want the biggest you can get, this is baby leech time. Right there, the sucker, that's the head. I'm gonna put the hook right behind it. Go right through the body. There, see I got it hooked once. Next, I'm gonna go mid-body. Hook it one more time. This time I go underneath, like that. So I do have a teaser tail sticking out, just like that. So when you jig, it's jigging up and down, looks seductive. And I know that's a word that uh, it does apply for fishing, seductive. If it looks seductive to you, it's gonna look seductive to the fish. Okay, what we're doing is we're jigging. We're not using bobbers this time of year. What I did earlier was I hooked up, I'll show you. I got, so what we use in the winter time, it's called a depth bob. 
Now what I like to do is we just dropped the anchor. Kim and I, we've been moving. We found where we want to catch the fish. That's so where we got the big one. Kim just lost one. Hook up the depth bomb right to the above the lure. This is going to help you get to the same depth every single time, real quick, real fast, and real easy. And that's the key. So right now I'm checking my depth. Okay. You notice here I've got a bobber stop. What I want to do is set that bobber stop so it's exactly flush with the top of the surface. All right, there I'm a little bit too deep. I'm going to come up. Let the depth bomb go right there. I'm a half inch below the surface. So when I bring it up and take the depth bomb off, I can drop it right down next to the bottom without touching the bottom and getting weeds like I just got here. That's going to help you catch fish, fish sunnies much quicker, much easier. Let out a little bit of line right there. Okay. I'm keeping that bobber stop just inches above the top of the water, which means my presentation is just inches off the bottom where these sunfish are holding. Now the sunfish are holding near the bottom where the grass is and the cabbage. They're holding near the bottom for protection. Do they suspend? Of course they suspend. All fish suspend once in a while. But we've been finding the most aggressive feeders are the ones closest to the bottom. And that's where Kim and I are picking up these nice size sunnies, close to the bottom. Nice one, huh? Yeah, feels very nice. Oh yeah. Very nice. Nice sunny. Very nice. Very nice fish. We can add him to the pile. Another nice one, Kim. Nice one, yes. Excellent. Okay, now you're having more luck with the angle worm than I am with the leech, so obviously it's time for me to switch over to the to the worm. There we go. There we go. That is a decent sunfish anywhere. Not bad. This is a nice sunny. We'll let him go. There, Kim's got a nice one too. Tell you, Steve, but I think I got a little better fish than you had. It looks like it. Oh, beautiful sunfish, Kim! Holy cow! There you go. Another, another big, big sunny. Real nice, Kim. We'll add that one to the pile. Got him on a leech. All right. Well, mix it a little up variety. Back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. We were talking earlier, midsummer techniques, location. While we're talking now techniques, back to techniques, we're jigging. Why aren't we using a bobber? Early in the season, the fish are closer to shore. Maybe they're in their spawning beds, just get done spawning. We're using a stationary presentation. They'll chase it down, they'll go after it, okay? Right now, the sunfish, you know, even though they're aggressively biting, you know, they're not sitting there ready to tackle something down. So we have to get a presentation that, like I said earlier, looks seductive to them. That's why we are jigging. Does a bobber pay off this time of year? Sure, but if you're after bigger ones, like we're trying to show you here, how to catch the bigger sunfish, you want to be jigging. That's what Kim and I are doing, is we're jigging up and down, constantly being aggressive. You can see the results we're having. These are really nice sized sunnies. I don't care what part of the United States you live in, folks. These are decent sized sunfish. There we go. Nice size bluegill there. Now it took me a while to tie into this one because I was being a little stubborn. I was trying to keep uh, the artificial going. I had a little uh, grub artificial on. I got maybe one hit the entire time while these guys are boating some. I'm gonna need the pliers there. This nice one here, Steve. Really nice fish here. Real nice fish. Two on at the same time. Holy mackerel. Oh boy, look at that one, Travis. Getting oh, better, yeah. getting better. <laughs> nice fish. Here we go. I got a decent oh. one. <laughs> he got an awesome one. <laughs> I got my bobber stopping and everything just sitting there where I want it. 
get right back down to the surface, give, give, give it a couple jigs. So all I'm doing is giving it a couple of jigs, got my finger on the line, whoop, there went dead, there we go, there we go. All right, nice Kim. Fish. Very nice. nice fish is right, nice fish is right. Look at that sunfish, you see the grass? Like Kim pointed out earlier, they're laying in the grass. Look at that sunfish, beautiful coloration, just beautiful. Steve, I finally, I got a really nice fish here. Very nice sunfish coming up here, if I can get him in here. One of our bigger <laughs> fish here. Nice. Got a little grass with him. Looks nice, Very Kim. nice, very nice. Very nice fish. Real nice, bud. Oh. There we go. One, two, three, within 20, 30 seconds. You know, I hate to sound like a broken record, folks, but this is what you do for midsummer sunfish. Move, move, move. That's the key. Look at that nice size sunny. Travis started it off, and two seconds later, Kim had that big one. Not a bad one. You know what? I would eat this anywhere. But considering we got another one, look at that. Considering Kim is catching bigger ones, we're going to go with his. Way to go, Kim. Four fish in, what, 30 seconds. Nice looking fish. No, they're pretty and they're clean. This one we'll release. Yep. There we go. Oh, there we go. It's a nice little, not really little, but a nice size bluegill there. There we go. Decent size, I think we'll throw him back though. Not quite the keepers that we wanted, but hey, on any other day, I would like this fish. Yeah, he's battling a little bit. A little nicer fish than I thought. Very nice fighter here. Very hungry as well. No hook to be seen. What's it been, Kim? All of five seconds since the last one? Yeah, this is a nice fish too. Very nice fish. A little bigger than the last one. Real nice sunnies. My goodness, look at that. That is nice. Very nice fish here. That is good. Real nice. Nice fish there, Steve. No, you got a nice got one. Got a little grass with him. Got the salad. Salad, and the hook is gone. They've been aggressive. I've been having that problem today. I have. That angleworm has been working very nice. It has. You know, and two, this is what, number, move number seven, right over here, right over here. That's a nice sunfish Kim's got. His is bigger than mine. But move number seven, folks, a little over an hour. It's been paying off. Kim, you gonna add him to the pile? Yeah, he'll be a nice uh, eater for tonight's you meal. You bet, you bet. Oh, boy, <laughs> this one's hammered. Was this choreographed uh, fishing? Oh, oh, boy. You got a nice one? I got a decent one. Well, yours is bigger, my friend. Holy cow, look at this. Again, hook is gone.